G'day folks and welcome to this playthrough of Salerno 43. Uh, this is another Mark Simonich title. I've had it sitting around for a while and finally giving it a shot. And I'm going to jump straight into this game. Um, I've read the rules, think I'm ready to go. Um, so let's get cracking. Now this is a campaign game and the game starts with a special invasion phase. To do this, we, um, we have a number of, sort of invasion forces set up along their invasion beaches and we make rolls on a special invasion CRT. Uh, so the Rangers and Commando. So these roll as one big um, group. We roll the dice. I've got the dice up here, my dial roller. I can't really show you the CRT. It's up the top left there. So we're looking at the Rangers and commandos row here. Uncle Beach is special, that's the beach here. It's um, landing in front of the Lilienthal and Moltke strong points. So it has a chance of suffering some losses. The other beaches are, relatively speaking, um, less occupied. So, starting off with the ranges up here in the north. And the die roll is a three, which will give them an advanced two. Okay, so one to land on the beach, that gives us one victory point for the allies. And then they get a second point and um, look, we'll go capture that port there and two up there. So I'm moving two along to secure the Chunzi Pass and just one to the left to secure Amalfi. Uh, this gives me a second port point. Uh, it's probably not, I, I can't really imagine myself doing a lot of port transfers, but just in case I've got that second point. All right, now we're moving on to the British commandos. Two um, British commando uh, units down here. They're rolling on the same area. It is a two, which is an advanced two. Okay, so they go one to land in Vietri sur Mer, which is Salmeri, which is just west of Salerno. Because they have one advance left, they can do what's called a breakthrough combat. And that's where they can attack Salerno. Um, to do that, we have odds of four in the attack uh, against an unknown defender. To calculate this unknown defender's strength, we roll a die. And oh, <laughs> this is not a good start. Okay. A six means that they have a strength of two. So we're looking at four to two in a city. Um, so, you know, there's a very good chance, there's a 50% chance here that they'll, if they roll a one, two or three, their defense is uh, zero and they're eliminated straight away. Six means they have a strength of two, which is exactly what the allies don't want when they're trying to capture Salerno on turn one. You can see this Kampf group is mechanized. Um, formation just ready to move into Salerno and really upset the allied plan so second roll of the game third roll of the game a six not good in any case we now have combat and it is two to one wow immediately um we're getting some complexity all right two to one um in a minor city so the fence strength is doubled Oh, except variable strength units. Okay, so two to one. Let's look at the combat modifiers. There's no tank shift, there's no air support, no divisional artillery support. There is an elite shift. So the two to one goes up to three to one. And I think that is it. Um, they are not attacking across the mountain hex site. So, I believe we're at three to one. A die roll of three is a DR2 result. The defender must either retreat two hexes and become disrupted or conduct a determined defense. I think the Germans really want to conduct a determined defense here. So we look at the determined defense table. Um, I'm gonna double check the requirements for the term defense just to see if they're eligible to do so because again they're a variable unit these types of units are uncommon um, 
if there are two or more surviving units, uh, if pick one as a lead unit, no worries. Um, we had a DR2 result, which is fine. The background color was not orange. Okay. The lead unit is of low quality. They're white background, uh, which means it'll be negative one dice roll modifier. What else? That's it, I think. So let's see how they go on their determined defense in a city. A five becomes a four, which is a partial success. So we're having a city battle here. Uh, partial success basically means if the defender was in a city hex, place a city battle marker there on the one side and cancel the retreat. Not a great start for the Brits. Okay, moving down to Uncle Peach. This is the one where they may suffer some losses. Okay, so on this beach, there's a special row. They roll a die. It's a five, which is an advance one, so they can move straight into here. So we've got the beachhead. Okay, that just establishes the beachhead. We've got a silhouette unit and two different infantry formations. All right, let's look at Sugar Beach. And now we're looking at all other beaches column. This column here, a roll of five, will give us an advance of two. So we can uh, I thought I had a sugar beach beachhead marker. I'm sure I should have a sugar beach beachhead marker. Hmm. Okay. Let me double check that. Sugar. No, 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 sorry. My apologies, no Sugar Beach. So one, and then we can go two to capture the airfield and gain a second VP. All right, next one, Roger Beach. Same row, column, a five gives them an advance of two. So we get the beachhead. Um, and from there, We might push out to there, keeping a strong, a strong stack. Okay, so uh, you know, as a this is a nineteen XX style of game, we have a hex bond between here, um, which secures, yeah, this area in here. Okay, and now further to the south, the Americans landing on. Uh, Red Beach, a one is just going to be a one hex advance ending on the beach. And on Blue Beach below them, a three is going to be an advance two. So we've got the beachhead landing. Um, now here's a question. What do I do? Tricky, tricky. Do I grab that victory point, noting the opportunity for a German counterattack almost immediately? I might do is go, whoa, they could attack my beachhead. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> That's a frustrating result to end on because I can advance one hex, but it makes me quite vulnerable to a counterattack. So what I'm gonna do is just go, Leave two there, and maybe just go one down there. So leave those guys protecting the beachhead just a little bit. Um, that's scary. Do I want to do that? What else can I do? What are my other options? Um, so beachheads um, have a special rule where they have their defensive benefit plus half the uh, half adjacent defenders that are also adjacent to the attacker. So if the Germans move in here, they'll get half of these guys helping them to defend. So that's a nice little special rule to protect beachheads. Um, look, I've got to move out, but... Hmm, I don't know where. Uh... <laughs> I'm 
looking at this stack here. All right, so the Germans can counterattack almost immediately. Um, is it worth just holding on the beach there? I've got to move off the beach, so maybe I, maybe I push up like that. Okay, if they do counterattack the beachhead directly, I can draw on pretty much all these defenders to to assist. Um, it's two plus you know, half their their defensive strength. Um, so fingers, that's what that's what I'm banking on. Okay, so that's most of this first turn um, special rule done. Uh, conducts all invasion combats, advances unit one for hexes. Um, it replaces the weather phase. Then the German player turn. Treats as a normal German player turn with the exception of the movement restrictions. Those restrictions are that they have half their movement allowance. Extended movement and attack movement are unaffected. Okay. So now we get to a normal, pretty much a normal game turn. A German player turn. Um, we didn't capture that, so leaving that blank for now. The initial phase. So he uses his available supply points to flip ASUs that are currently supply, place German reinforcements, uh, restore replacements. Movement phase. Okay, so what do they want to do? And I think down here is really a critical consideration. What do the Germans want to do? Um, Let me let me just double check. Um, so beachheads, the beachhead units are actually worth victory point. Um, two plus half the defense strength rounded down of allied units adjacent. So it'd be two plus. 6, 12, 6, 8, have a strength of 8. So yeah, they're, they're pretty, um, that beach it's pretty safe, I'd say. Because if this formation here moves in there and attacks, they'd be up against 1 to 2 at least. Um, so yeah, not a great combat for the Germans. They probably are better off just sitting there because they've got a defense of 6, and although they're in the open, they've only got an attack of 5, so they'd be out gun there. I think they'll hold in the mountains. Um, hold there, hold there. What else is there to do? Okay, so we do have this variable combat unit way down the south, just off the map. Um, we have a movement allowance of five, and there's this secondary road here, which is half half movement allowance. So it's one, two. Um, two and a bit, and we'll just block that corridor through the mountains there. They're static, they can't move. And that's everything down the south. There aren't a lot of German units on the map at the start. There's a full reinforcement schedule sitting off to the right. Oh, actually, we do have reinforcements arriving. We have two Volksmjäger formations coming in from the north and the south. One from the north and one from the south. So these guys from the south, uh, okay, just looking, it's off camera, but I might try and put them on a main road and send them flying north. So their foot units using a primary road is one. So, oh, but they can use extend, oh, it's halved as well. So they were halved to two and a half. I think they used two and a half. Um, half. One and a half, two and a half, yeah. So they use up exactly their movement. These guys only have one and a half, they're off camera, but pretty much can't go anywhere. But they'll use extended movement to go one, two, three. Okay, now way up in the north, these guys can come in on this primary road and go, yeah, one in the north, half rounded up, in fact, so that's three. One, they are mechanized. So one, two, three. They might just hold Nocera Inferiore. And um, we're going to move these guys down one and hold on to Salerno. Okay. 
So Lerno is held quite strongly now. They're static. They um, which are the ones that no, they not they can't move until turn three. Yep. So they're allowed to move three. Um, one, two, three. And then we've got these small groupings in the center. Um, hmm, okay. I think for the most part, I kind of just wanted to, we want to hold apparently, Bati Puglia. These guys are kind of out in the open in a bit of a vulnerable position. Um, okay, so attacking across a river, this minor river here, if allies attack across, the defenders are double. So what I could do here is just shift to there, a bit of attack movement, and it forces um, the allies, if they want to attack this hex, to basically attack a defense of eight. That's better than being out in the open there. It does break my Zoc bond, but I'm less concerned about that for now. Um, and that's pretty much all the German movement. That's a German movement done. We go to the combat phase and tempting, 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 but no, there is no combat taking place. So through the recovery phase, no Germans are disrupted or in full retreat. Um, any replacement half efficiency or truck markers are removed. Oh, trucks, of course, we do have trucks. Um, so maybe those reinforcements that came in on the, in the south, truck markers. This is, the Germans have two of these available, 5.8. Okay, the truck markers, two mechanized non, to two German non-mechanized units that are in supply, may use truck markers to move as mechanized units with a movement allowance of five. So I'm thinking I could put this on a reinforcement unit. So I'm going to put this on this unit that came in in the south. So they now, they have five mechanized movements, half to two and a half, but now they're using a primary road. So that's one, two and a half. They just get a few extra hexes, actually extended movement. Um, how does that work? Do we do add the plus two to, um, extended movement? Could move six hexes. That's oh, plus three movement points for extended movement. Okay, so they halve it and then add the three. So that's two and a half, five and a half. One, two, three, four, five and a half. And now you can see them on the map. So this little formation was way back down the south, has jumped in their trucks and they've flown. So basically it's five, half to two and a half, extended movement because they haven't ended uh, or moved adjacent to uh, any enemy forces. And now they're moved during the recovery phase. So that's a pretty good thing to keep in mind for the Germans. They are now right in the thick of it, close to it at least. Uh, next turn they'll be in pretty much close to Eboli. Um, Batapaglia, yeah. So yeah, they're getting close to the front very quickly. Okay, uh, where were we up to? That was the recovery phase, the supply phase, um, raw for isolation, blah, blah, blah. That's it. Now we have the allied, a normal, I believe, Allied player turn. Um, treat as a normal allied player with the exceptions in 24.4. So they may only use tactical movement and allied reinforcements for turn one are those in the follow up wave. Okay, so these guys are the reinforcements. Uh, units in follow up wave. Um, must use tack movement, count the beach as the first hex of a two hex movement. If they move adjacent to an enemy unit, they're marked with a half efficiency marker. Sugar beach can be land, used to land follow-up units. 
but the beach is considered closed at mid turn one. Okay, so I might want to avoid Sugar Beach. Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Okay, so uh, initial phase, supply points, reinforcements enter. So I'm going to, now you can land units overstacked. So I'm gonna land overstacked here. Um, is that correct? I place reinforcements in, oh no, sorry. So to be placed on a beach. These guys, okay, what do we got here? I'll put the artillery where it's a bit safe and then try to get a tank down in the south and a tank in the north, like so. What's my plan here? Okay, try and push the Germans off these heights, especially these heights, as quickly as possible. So I'm looking to get combat on this formation. Okay, so there's my the, the um, reinforcements placed. Place reinforcements, no replacements, place allied units in landing boxes and conduct airborne landings. There's no landing block, uh, airborne landings yet. Now the movement phase. Okay, so um, we're gonna go one, two, three, and one. Now I don't think zones of control don't extend across I can do a tactical move anyway, so I'm going to attack move to hmm, here, I guess. Um, and I want to get to Salerno. So I'm going to go one, attack move, attack move. Oh, sorry, they couldn't go three because it's attack move only. Um, oh, they can go one, two, attack move across the mountains. I believe that's legal. So there's two kinds of movement, normal movement and tack movement. And tack moving is just, you get two movement points. Um, must stop upon entering an enemy zone of control. Can't cross prohibited hexide. May not cross a Zoc bond, yeah. Doesn't say anything about mountains there. Okay, so if that was a mechanized unit, they wouldn't be able to do that because I think they've crossed a mountain hexite. So yeah, they're fine. Um, they will hang about there. They've moved north. Right, we are going to maybe bring these big brigades up to here. Um, try and attack that place there. That's a big defense. So I've got some choices to make here. Do I either try and attack through here or try and attack but a puglia. Look, I think it might be nice to get up into the hills here. But a puglia, five, six, seven, eight, nine to 11, 12, 13. Ugh, it's a minor city. I might wait until I have some greater strength. So, what I'm going to do is move in there, tack move there. Um, these guys can come on and tack move to there. All right, so we're going to attack this kind of trail through there. Um, I am going to move them, they're going to be my defensive guys, moving there, actually there, they're not going to attack, they've got a good defense of five, so they'll hold, create a Zokbon through here to these guys, which is just going to kind of pin those forces in Badapuglia, um, with a plan to eventually attack it, okay. Keeping, keeping north of the river. Then we've got these guys coming on. So attack move. Um, we'll go one, two. One. And one. All right, so they've just landed. Then in the south here. What's my plan? Yeah, grab those heights as quickly as possible. So, um, 
going to throw everything at that. So we've got to think about the formations as well. So main attacking force. Yeah, this is the 36th division attacking. So that's their main attacking force. Um, anything other. So for example, up here you've got the 46th division attacking Salerno. They'll be at full strength, but in, these commandos here will only be at half strength attacking. So I do need to keep that in mind as well. So here I've got mixed formation as well, 56 and 46. Uh, okay. Yep. All right. That is my movement done. I'm already nervous about this. We've captured the airfield. So that's another victory point. So we've got one, two, three. Okay. Now for combat, the combat phase. Um, look, I don't think, I don't think I want to attack here because they're in a city already and they'll be doubled, which will make it tough. What I'm just going to do is try and hold them there. I do want to try to attack Salono. I'm guessing that city battle marker stays in place. Um, it's interesting. They have much stronger defense now, but technically... The marker was there, and I don't think there's anything saying remove the marker, but let's double check. Partial success. Um, once the city treat all, once it has a marker, treat all further partial success results as a delay. Yep, they're only removed if the unit leaves the hex. Okay, so we're going to do a combat up in Salerno. We have the 46th division leading, and they've got five, six, seven, eight. They can borrow that unit. And then half of these guys is nine, 10. So this is my main attacking force, 10. I'm already worried about that. Maybe I shouldn't attack Salerno because these defenders could be really tough. Um, okay, so. Strength of 10, um, they are in, um, we have to work out the variable strength. So every time you roll for this variable strength, every time you attack with this variable or defend, you must roll for variable strength. So that was six strength two last time. This time it is a zero. And I think they're removed. Um, maybe not because they're not alone now. 19.3. So last time they would have been alone, they would have been removed. But they're not alone anymore. Nope, if there's always zero, the unit is immediately eliminated. If it was the only... Yep, if the result is zero, it says very clearly, the unit is immediately removed. Okay, first German casualty. So now we're left with 10 to 4. Ah, but these guys are in a city, so they're doubled. They are in a city. They are doubled. Defense strength times 2. Except silhouetted tank units, variable strength units. Yes, yes, yes. No, def no tank shift is possible. They are elite. Now, um, this is interesting because... So tank shift, air support. Let's bring in my Spitfires for air support. Um, let's also, this is an important combat, so let's also bring in Task Force 85. can be used within two hexes of the Gulf of Salerno. So that's right against the Gulf, so it can be used. Um, so that's plus two shift, uh, or two shifts to the right. Um, what else do I need to be mindful of? Uh, I think that's the main thing. Okay, so we are looking at, what I say, was it five, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten to eight, which is one to one. We um, have S port. And naval support, which is two shifts to the right. Oh, oh. Hmm. 
I'm just thinking, so these guys should be half efficiency because they did move adjacent. I do have to remember that. They moved adjacent and they moved adjacent. Okay, they landed and they moved adjacent. So half efficiency, must keep that in mind. They're okay because they landed on the first turn in the pre-landing thing. Okay, <laughs> a few things to keep in mind there. Ooh, one to one goes up to two to one, up to three to one. The defender has no tanks, no air support, and it's not raining. So it is just three to one, which is not bad for an attack on Salerno. And the die roll is a three. So three to one, three is a DR2 result. Okay, so the Germans are definitely going to want to make a determined defense. Okay, the lead unit is elite, so it's plus one. Yeah, it's going to be a plus one modifier to their determined defense. A three makes that a four, which is a P result. Now they already have the city battle marker, so this is a delay result on the determined defense. And a delay result means that the defender retreats one to three hexes, their choice, and becomes disrupted. I'm just going to double check that. So first of all, uh, place a facility battle marker there on the one side and cancel the retreat. Treat all further partial successes as a delay. Yep, so the, they retreat one to three hexes. So one, they're just going to go back one into the mountains there. Um, the attacker earns a limited advance. Yeah. Okay, so that's two victory points for the allies. Yep, that's fine. And becomes disrupted. Yes. Um, So that's, that's the partial result, the, the de delay result, sorry, on the determined defense table for a city. They really needed, so that was a four, um, oh, one more and they would have been able to hold. I think it gives them a choice of retreating or suffering a step loss and holding. So they're very close. Um, okay, so we've captured Salerno. The Americans have captured Salerno. Um, Spitfires have been used. I'm just going to double check that. I did use them correctly. We have got our naval support. Um, Air support, maximum of one available air unit per combat. And I believe it provides a column shift. At least that's according to the CRT. One to the right. Air support, yep. Okay, next combat. Um, so I forgot about this half strength. So that brings them down to five in total. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 on 3 in the hills, so that they are elite, so that's problematic. 10 to 3 in the hills, the hills will double their strength, which will make it a 1 to 1 combat, and I've already used up my air support, so I might, I might not attack there. Um, so instead of moving, can I reconsider? 10 to 5 in a, no. I'm just going to hold in this area. No combats around here. We've captured Salerno. That's nice for turn one. We are, however, almost certainly going to attack down here. They have got, they are in the hills, so their defense is 10, and they do have armor. <laughs> Jeez, maybe I don't want to attack in the hills just yet. 6, 12. 
14, 15, 16. Look, I do have my air markers. I may as well throw everything at it. Okay, so we're gonna, oh, they're out of artillery range. Oh, out of, out of naval attack range. I will get a shift for my, um, my air. I don't have any elite units in this area, so the Germans will get a benefit there. And I believe armor will be equal. Let's give it a go. We need to we need to attack. We need to force them back. Okay, so combat here. We have got a strength of. Oh, we also got these guys. I'm pretty sure they can land and land their support because they're not adjacent. Um, so we have got six, twelve, plus half of nine is sixteen on five. 16, ah, doubled, 16 on 10, so one to one, plus one, plus two. So one to one goes two to one, three to one column. Three to one column. Okay, so we're looking at three to one. Um, the defenders have no tank shift, no air support, and it's not raining. Um, yep, three to one. Let's see how this goes. Die roll. A six, three to one, six is gonna be a D1. The defender loses one step. Um, they'll lose that from these guys. Yep, that's a two step unit. Um, surviving defenders must either retreat three hexes and become disrupted or conduct a determined defense. This is a, I kind of want to hold the allies on the beaches. So I'm going to try to conduct a determined defense. The column's not going to be so good now. It's on the other column, but let's see how we go. So it's a three. Now we have lead units, sorry, is going to be, oh, doesn't really matter, they're not elite. Um, no defensive support, they're not low quality. It wasn't orange, so it's an other column three. It fails. In effect, the dash dash three here. Yep. So the determined defense fails, um, and they have to retreat. So that was a D one result initially. They must retreat three hexes and become disrupted. One, two, three, and become disrupted. The attacker may advance up to three hexes with their mechanized units and two hexes. Okay, so they have one advance after combat, so they could just move to there, but these guys can go a bit. What are we thinking here? Instead of advancing to the hex, we'll go. This is a bit interesting. So the advance after combat. Um, for a D1 result. Two hex advance with non mechanized. So they can go basically rotate one, so not advance to the hex with one, and then come down here to two, for example. These guys likewise can go not advance to the hex for one, move over here for two, and these guys can go, yeah, we'll take the one hex advance after combat. Um, I'm not sure if that was a good idea or not, but it does open this pathway through to Alta Villa Celentina and beyond, um, which will force probably this formation to come into this area here. They can just reach it now. But yeah, a couple of disrupted Germans. So yeah, a bit of a mix of luck, I think, for both sides. Um, yeah, that's the events after combat. Uh, that's the combat phase done. Now, units that are disrupted or in full retreat, recover one level, all replacement, half efficiency, and truck markers are removed. Check the supply status of all units, they're all fine. And we have no supply points. Oh, we should have got, should have got one allied supply point, one German supply point. During when was that? Uh, 
Oh, maybe not, because we skip. No, I believe that. I don't think we skip the weather. No, we <laughs> do we skip the weather phase in the first turn? Um, I have a feeling we skip the weather phase. It replaces the weather phase. So no supplies on turn one. There's no weather phase on turn one, and it's during the weather phase, technically, the weather phase is a sort of a three-step phase. You check the weather, ready your units, and adjust supply. And it's during that supply, adjust supply points where you um, get points. But because we skipped the entire weather phase, we don't get those supply points. All right, so that's the end of the first turn. We go victory check phase. Now, I don't think we captured anything else. There were no VPs over here. Always got to keep checking that. Okay, so... But Salona has been captured, and that's important. Um, yeah. Okay, folks, that's the end of the first turn. I'm going to sit on this just for a little bit, just to make sure, reflect, make sure I've done nothing wrong. Um, and I will continue this soon. Thanks for watching all.